The Docker Bank incident occurred on the night of 21-22 October 1904, when the Russian Baltic fleet mistook some British trawlers in the Dogger Bank area of the North Sea for an Imperial Japanese Navy force and fired on them. Russian warships also fired on each other in the chaos of the melee. Three British fishermen died and a number were wounded. One sailor and a priest aboard a Russian cruiser caught in the crossfire were also killed. The incident almost led to war between Britain and Russia. Incident The Russian warships involved in the incident were en route to the Far East to reinforce the 1st Pacific Squadron stationed at Port Arthur and later Vladivostok during the Russo-Japanese War. Because of the fleet's alleged sightings of balloons and four enemy cruisers the day previously, coupled with the possibility that the Japanese might surreptitiously have sent ships around the world to attack them, the Russian Admiral Zinovi Rojestvansky called for increased vigilance, issuing an order that no vessel of any sort must be allowed to get in among the fleet and to prepare to open fire upon any vessels failing to identify themselves. With ample reports about the presence of Japanese torpedo boats, submarines and minefields in the North Sea, and the general nervousness of the Russian sailors, 48 harmless fishing vessels were attacked by the Russians, thousands of miles away from enemy waters. It was known that enemy intelligence had been heavily active in the region. Torpedo boats, a recent development of the major navies, had the potential to damage and sink large warships and were very difficult to detect, causing psychological stress on sailors at war. In 1898, during the Spanish-American War, American warships had opened fire on ocean swells, trains on land, and rocks along the coastline taking them for Spanish torpedo boats. Similar accidents and rumors affected the Russian fleet. There was a general fear of attack, with widespread rumors that a fleet of Japanese torpedo boats were stationed off the Danish coast. Talk of the Japanese having mined the seas, and alleged sightings of Japanese submarines. Before the Dogabank incident, the nervous Russian fleet fired on fishermen carrying consular dispatches from Russia to them, near the Danish coast, without causing any damage due to their poor gunnery. After negotiating a non-existent minefield, the Russian fleet sailed into the North Sea. The disaster of 21 October began in the evening, when the captain of the supply ship Kamchatka, which was last in the Russian line, took a passing Swedish ship for a Japanese torpedo boat and radioed that he was being attacked. Later that night, during fog, the officers on duty sighted the British trawlers, interpreted their signals incorrectly and classified them as Japanese torpedo boats, despite being more than 32,000 kilometers from Japan. The Russian warships illuminated the trawlers with their searchlights and opened fire. The British trawler crane was sunk, and its captain and first mate were killed. Four other trawlers were damaged, and six other fishermen were wounded, one of whom died a few months later. As the trawlers had their nets down, they were unable to flee in. In the general chaos, Russian ships shot at each other. The cruisers Aurora and Dmitry Idonskoy were taken for Japanese warships and bombarded by seven battleships sailing in formation, damaging both ships and killing a chaplain and at least one sailor and severely wounding another. During the pandemonium, several Russian ships signaled torpedoes had hit them, and on board the battleship Borodino rumors spread that the ship was being boarded by the Japanese with some crews donning life vests and lying prone on the deck, and others drawing cutlasses. More serious losses to both sides were only avoided by the extremely low quality of Russian gunnery, with the battleship Oriel reportedly firing more than 500 shells without hitting anything. After 20 minutes firing the fishermen saw a blue light signal on one of the warships, the order to cease firing. Aftermath the incident led to a serious diplomatic conflict between Russia and Britain, which was particularly dangerous due to the Anglo-Japanese alliance. 
In the aftermath some British newspapers called the Russian fleet pirates and Admiral Rojestvinsky was heavily criticized for not leaving the British sailors' lifeboats. The editorial of the Morning's Times was particularly scathing. It is almost inconceivable that any men calling themselves seamen, however frightened they might be, could spend 20 minutes bombarding a fleet of fishing boats without discovering the nature of their target. The Royal Navy prepared for war, with 28 battleships of the home fleet being ordered to raise steam and prepare for action, while British cruiser squadrons shadowed the Russian fleet as it made its way through the Bay of Biscay and down the coast of Portugal. Under diplomatic pressure, the Russian government agreed to investigate the incident, and Rojestvansky was ordered to dock in Vago, Spain, where he left behind those officers considered responsible. From Vigo, the main Russian fleet then approached Tangiers, Morocco, and lost contact with the Kamchatka for several days. The Kamchatka eventually rejoined the fleet and claimed that she had engaged three Japanese warships and fired over 300 shells. The ships she had actually fired at were a Swedish merchantman, a German trawler, and a French schooner. As the fleet left Tangiers, one ship accidentally severed the city's underwater telegraph cable with her anchor, preventing communications with Europe for four days. The Russian fleet was barred from using the Suez Canal and British ports as a result of the incident. It thus proceeded around Africa, where it rendezvoused with German supply ships that had been hired to replenish its coal stocks at sea. The fleet then proceeded to the Sea of Japan where it was defeated in the Battle of Tsushima. On 25 November 1904, the British and the Russian government signed a joint agreement in which they agreed to submit the issue to an international commission of inquiry, whose proceedings were to be based on the Hague Convention. The International Commission met in Paris from 9 January to 25 February 1905. Its report issued at the conclusion of its proceedings criticized Admiral Rojestvansky for his decision to fire upon the British ships. However, it concluded that, as each Russian vessel swept the horizon in every direction with her own searchlights to avoid being taken by surprise, it was difficult to prevent confusion. It concluded that the opening of fire by Admiral Rojestvansky was not justifiable. It also concluded as follows. The commissioners take pleasure in recognizing, unanimously, that Admiral Rojestvansky personally did everything he could, from beginning to end of the incident, to prevent trawlers, recognized as such, from being fired upon by the squadron. The fishermen eventually received £66,000 from Russia in compensation. In 1906 the Fisherman's Memorial was unveiled in Hull to commemorate the deaths of the three British sailors. The approx. 18 feet high statue shows the dead fisherman George Henry Smith and carries the following inscription. Erected by public subscription to the memory of George Henry Smith and William Richard Leggett of the steam trawler Crane, who lost their lives through the action of the Russian Baltic fleet in the North Sea, the 22nd of October 1904, and Walter Welpton, skipper of the trawler Mino, who died through shock, May 1905.